Hello, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Wednesday, July 6th, the 14th week of Ordinary Time, and the feast day of St. Maria Goretti. And she is one of the more popular saints. She died in 1902, which is not that far away. Um, she was not that old either. She was born in 1890, but she was an Italian virgin martyr. Uh, of the church, and one, and like I said, one of the youngest saints to be canonized. She was born uh, to a farming family, but her dad died when she was just nine. So then the family had to share a house with another family, the Serenellis, and Maria took over the household duties while her mother, her brothers, and her sisters worked on the fields. That I assume her dad typically did. But one afternoon. Alessandro, one of the Serenellis, he was their 20-year-old son, made sexual advances to her, uh, to Maria Gretti, and she refused to submit to him, um, and so he stabbed her 14 times. She was taken to the hospital, but she died forgiving him, um, and he was eventually arrested, convicted, and jailed, uh, but during prison, he was he repented, and after 27 years, he was released from prison, visited St. Maria Gretti's mother to beg forgiveness, and she granted it. Um, and then he later became a lay brother in a monastery, and he died in 1970. Anyway, St. Maria Gretti is the patron saint of chastity, rape victims, girls, youth, teenage girls, um, poverty, purity, and forgiveness. Today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the, of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm not sure if they sent them out, if he sent them out in pairs, but in the midst of reading that, whoever was paired up with Judas, Judas Iscariot had to be super pissed whenever Judas Iscariot turned him in, because I assume they became pretty close. And I wonder if one of the other apostles, his partner, which I assume might have been Simon the, Can the Cananian, um, since they were listed consecutively. Excuse me, if he knew. But anyway, those are just random thoughts. Let's go to the word among us for our reflection today. Jesus sent out these 12. We might wonder how the experience of the 12 applies to us today. Do we go into the streets and cry out, the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Do we demonstrate God's kingdom by healing the sick, raising the dead, or casting out demons? Certainly it's possible. God can and does work miracles through us. But that's generally not our day-to-day -day experience. If looking at the feats performed by the disciples discourages you, don't forget the point of what Jesus was saying here. The signs the apostles worked weren't meant to be an end in themselves. They were meant to point people to the presence of God's heavenly kingdom on earth. They were meant to point people to Jesus himself, who is the ruler of this kingdom. Physical healings, exorcisms, and the like still happen today, and sometimes they happen through us but they aren't the only signs of God's presence on earth. There are many other ways to demonstrate the love, joy, and peace of the kingdom to the people around us. Certainly pray that your child be healed or that a friend be set free from a sinful habit, but also be open to whatever the Lord wants you to be a sign. Think, for instance, about the deep impact your faith can have on other people. Think about how dramatic a sign it can be if you forgive someone who has deeply offended you or the sign of being kind to someone who others completely ignore, 
Or what about the sign you perform simply by trying to live out the virtues of purity, humility, gentleness, and faithfulness in your relationships? When you focus your heart on Jesus' presence in you, you become a sign that points to him wherever you go. You can begin just by making this prayer of St. John Henry Newman your own every morning. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel your presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. This is the calling of every Christian. This is the way we point to God's kingdom here on earth. It's a calling Jesus fulfilled in the twelve, and it's a calling he is happy to fulfill in us. Lord, shine through me. There we go. Have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen.